All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know who this man is. His second time on the Just Action Show. We always appreciate when this brother comes through. Shannon, hey. dream, what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? How y'all doing, man? Doing good. Doing good, bro. Bright and early like the orange juice, man. How you feeling, bro? No, feeling good, man. Feeling good. Can't complain, man. We've been busy this year. Been busy. Yeah, man. Y'all you, been after it, bro. Now, look, time out. Before we get into other stuff that you've been doing, you, you got to tell me about this. I saw you. You, you, this, this armor truck, man, that, that, that threw me for a loop. I said, what, homie was just <laughs> like, like, tell me about, I, I never dri driven an armor truck. What was that? I mean, you don't want to drive one, man. It's like a school bus. For real? <laughs> yeah. They, uh, you know what I mean? They, they big as shit, man. It's, it was a cool experience, but they, you know, it's, you know how you, in, you in a regular car, you got more control over the wheel. So right. So you kind of got to like, yeah, it, 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 you can't take a break while you're behind that thing. It, thing, it moves a lot. What? Yeah, so, but uh, a, a friend of, of mine, uh, through a mutual friend, uh, he bought one. Uh, he, he had one. So when we went to Vegas, we was doing this police racing. And he's yeah. like, I got an armor truck. But it's like, you know, sim this is some symbolic saying, you know, obviously when you see an armor truck, you know it's inside the armor truck is money. Right. So right. It just, he bought it because it's a symbolism of, you know, having some money or, or, or chasing the bag, stuff like that. So it was cool. We, we didn't even get to use it for the scene, but it was cool. Man, I look forward to one day where I can say, I could just get it on, I could just get something random. Yeah, and no, I, it's definitely random. Yeah. I had I, I had a coworker, true story. He had a um a army truck. Mm -hmm. You know, like vision Vietnam. And they had those big, big trucks with massive tires, and they had the soldiers in the back of the bed. Mm -hmm. He had yeah. one of those. He he actually purchased it. That was his everyday vehicle. Really? I got a friend of mm -hmm. Abdullah. Abdullah owns a tank. What? Good Lord, a tank. Yeah, yeah. Adula on he on a tank, and uh, it's it's legal because it has tires. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it got the it got the cannon and that bitch and everything. It, it, it's street legal because it, it has tires. Interesting. He can so he can cross it off his bucket list. That was on my bucket list before I leave this earth. I gotta drive a tank somehow, some way. Really. Yeah, I know. Got one. You, money. you may want to hit, hit him up when, when you know when it's time to tap out. He got one. Man, I I got it. I got to hit him up and experience that right there, man. He got a, he got a lot of toys over there, man. He got a, he got some nasty gear. Yeah. That's what's up, man. I gotta give you a um, congratulations, man, on the uh, premiere of the bricks. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that for sure. You know, James and Tashe, they was able to come be on a red carpet and and um, yeah, was, you know, it looked like a it was a. a a great event that went went well. Yeah, no, it it, it it went well. We've been building it up, man. We've been, you know, I mean, that's our third or fourth or red carpet. I think that's definitely was the most uh, one that attended. I think we sell out every year, but for some reason, it just seemed like it was double the people that it's, it, it's always been. I don't know if they just came to do the red carpet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was like 20, 30 people who came knowing we didn't have extra tickets. So I think it was it was more people there than, than ever. But we had a good experience. Went next door and had fun, like uh, like we always do. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was it was cool. I can't wait till it come out. Yeah, it, it comes out uh this month on Tubi. Is that correct? Yeah, it's supposed to be towards the end of the month. Yep. Okay, bad. That's bad. And um, I, I don't know if I get get a chance to tell you this, but man, appreciate you again for giving me uh that scene right there with Brandy. Um, oh man, now we got we got more stuff coming. We got we got a lot more coming. Uh, I actually got this nineteen twenties film. That uh, you know, it's gonna be like a kind of like a against the film. You know, it's about some bootleggers who try to get the, uh, some mobsters try to extort these black bootleggers from Mississippi. But it's gonna be hard. It's called vultures. It's, it's gonna be hard. I just gotta find the right location. Oh, that's, oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. We got a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff coming, man. Which brings yeah. to me, um, when you gonna write a comedy? Ah oh, man, I, I do I have a comedy already written? I think I think I do. I think we got we got a couple comedies. One of the ones is Knockers. Um, 
and stars uh Choco. We got I think mm. that's gonna be funny. It's a for shit some years ago. Uh one of the only jobs I really ever had. Um that I but it still wasn't even a nine to five job. We get the we, we got to come when we ever wanted to come. It was like a, a you know people door knock and sell mm-hmm. some so it was uh security sales like when you sell like a uh, home security systems. Yeah. And that had to be probably the funniest time of my life because it's like you you got all these young, we me 20, 19, 22, 23, 4 year old people who have the opportunity to make crazy money, right? Because each sale could be four hundred to a thousand dollar sale. And at, at 20 years old, that's a lot of money. So you have you got this competition uh aspect to uh everything because you know you gotta knock a certain amount of doors and it's, everybody in the neighborhood not gonna gonna buy it. So you all rushing to try to figure out who um is the one person who looking for security. So that just make it, you know, competitive. But it's the people that you experience not only like on the bus with you, but in these homes, you seeing a you seeing a hundred people every day. Yeah. And so the film is about the people who you meet. I mean I didn't had I don't accidentally walked into a house where they had like sex trafficking that they had Asian girls running naked. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't answer the door. People don't let me in. It's an old dude balls hanging out of sorts. Like it's a whole bunch of crazy, funny shit that I experienced during the um uh, during that time. So that's pretty much what knockers is about. It's about a guy who uh he choke up his dad's white uh super businessman, but he gets he, he goes to jail for um uh, tax evasion. So oh, he has yeah. to he has to try to figure out a way to maintain his lifestyle and help get his dad out of jail. So he has to do, you know, he, he's not qualified to do shit. So he, he knocks uh, doing the security system and um, he just, you know, exposes the audience to, to that life. And that life is, is funny as shit. Yeah. But, but we, oh. we hadn't came out with it yet. We hadn't shot it yet. We shot an episode um, but it, and it was funny, but we're going we're gonna to turn it into a movie. Man, how how Man. hard is it for you to keep a straight face when Choco is in his bag and just doing the most? Man, that got to be hard for you, bro. I'll be. <laughs> you know the crazy part about Choco is Choco not the same person you see when you meet him. He's not the same person you see in his skits. Yeah, he, he, he he's a lot more serious. Like when he's working. Yeah. So, I mean, we laugh a lot doing knockers because of, of the situation, but. He he's not the person who you would think, but he's not. He's he not the person that on set he always trying to crack jokes and he he, he not he not that person. He he's actually serious. You wouldn't know it's Choco if you didn't know it was Choco. You know if that makes mm. sense. But if he's in character, then he you know he he gonna be funny. But if you just sitting back and and he probably the 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 last person to crack a joke on set. Mm. You know you you write about that too because at the um, premiere of the Bricks movie. I was just chilling, and then like I was just you know talking, chopping up with you and everything. I turned looking like, oh, what's up, Choco? He was just chill, cool, yeah. regular dude. Yeah, yeah, no, he, yeah he he he'll chill, sit back and relax and absorb everything. He not he not somebody who you would think he it would be. He he way more serious in in person. Yeah, we gotta get him on the show. Yeah, no, definitely. I I could uh definitely uh tell him. So reach out to y'all. We got to reach out to him. He definitely do it. He loves to do it. Oh yeah. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely, man. So now, one thing but, I, I do love that uh, that you do because I seen when y'all did the premiere. You also did, um, in, I believe it was Acres Home. Y'all did a community event as well, premiering. Sure, for sure, got to. How, how important is that to you to, to make sure you are you know uh, still reaching back and doing stuff in the community? I mean, it, it it was important. It's always important. But it was important through uh, in that situation because uh, you know the name of the film was The Bricks. So yeah. we, we wanted to be able to give it back to the community because obviously, you know, we was there for, for at least 10 days shooting over there in the area. So, you know, and you know, we, we met a lot of people and we already knew a lot of people before. But you know, this it's always good to when you go, you know, when you use someone's uh likeness. You know, obviously, to try to pay back because there's little kids running through scenes, and yeah, you no, know, we had a lot of fun. So we wanted to, and then it's always good to let people see. Uh, you know, it's called the brick, so it was it was fun for them to be able to watch uh, us shoot that, and you know, everybody waiting on it to come out. So we wanted to show them first before it too. 
Yeah, man. And it was um I, I have fun. Um not just the the time I filmed with y'all, I was on that scene, but also the premiere night because it was so many people and it was beautiful to see, you know, y'all tell y'all, hey, everybody who's on the cast, you know, come on up to the stage, you know, say this and say that. And uh uh, we we shout out to D Miss uh I, I know it's Virgo season but it's Leo the Leo season then she gonna let you know it's always Leo season up Leo the, season I'll never leave we just let everybody else have it that's right because you a Leo too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna let Mike Mike and Kristen to, to say uh, come at you with that right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man but uh, I, I just love seeing that it was just so beautiful to see like uh all these talented people up there um saying thank you and, and shout out to now it was you and push 24 correct mm -hmm. yeah push yep. 24 no do not harp and everything yeah and I, I love seeing that because you know houston texas has talent and a talent. yeah a lot man so um tell us a little bit about like you know the people everyone that you use man like just like I, do you ever get a chance to sit down and just you know marvel at what you do or just like uh, how do you you can't. You, yeah. you, you got to keep the work moving because I think sometimes people get caught up in, um, like, if, if we if we count, I said we were supposed to do, my goal, I think maybe I even said it when I was on your show last time, is, uh, yeah. I said 10 movies in a year? Yeah. I think yeah. About, we, we had, like, 16 right now. So, and it's shit. Just turned September. So, we, we probably on pace to do 20-some movies which is double what I was anticipating. And uh, I think you just got to keep, you got to keep working and let everybody else figure the rest of you. When you get caught up in what you're doing then you're not doing it no more. You know what I mean? I think you yeah. just got to work and, and be able to handle what you can handle. Um, and then shit, when, when you look back, you know, it's a, it's a time where you look back and be like, damn, we got it done. But right now we got like shit. We, just from what I know, we got yeah. red flags next week. Mm -hmm. uh, we just shot the Vegas movie. We got this movie called um, uh, The Wrong One, which is like an action film. It's almost like uh, John Wick, kind of like a film. Yeah. It's going to be a big production. And then we got Dangerous Thirst 1 and 2, but we're shooting back to back. Yeah. You know I mean? So we got like four to six movies within the next month or and a half. So mm -hmm. you you don't really have enough time to really think. And then um, Jannard Gen Gen just shot two movies, this, uh, two extra movies that just came out. So he shot Hatman. He shot, um, shit, show me that movie. I forgot the name of it. But, and then he's shooting Marie right now. Yeah. Oh, so, that's right. He's doing But are, are, are you not tired, <laughs> sir? Like, sleep. Like, <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> what, where's the sleep at? You know, I mean, you. At some point, like you know, it, it, you you develop a system. You get tired. I think like when we came, we drove to Vegas. So yeah, that Vegas trip hit 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 your boy hard, right? Yeah. But it's because we drove twenty some hours there, drove twenty some hours back. We was there for like six days or something like that. Um, there was there for like six days and two travel days. Um, so that I was tired from that, and I didn't know I was tired, so I laid down. I didn't want to get up. I was like, shit, I'm tired. But I went to work the next day. Um, so, I mean, you get tired, but it's like, you know, what, what, that's part of it, right? Otherwise, you know, you, yeah. you either be tired doing what you want to do or you looking for opportunities to be able to do what you want to do and you got energy, right? So it's you kind of got to you gotta pick and choose which, you know, what you want to do. Next year, we're probably going to take a break. Us actually shooting films, I probably only want to shoot like four or five movies next year. Um, so I can focus on the ones I want to do. I think I'm working on a, a dope-ass series with my son right now yeah and so it's it, so hoping to shoot that beginning of next year so it's a couple of films i'm probably gonna um focus on and then you know let them shoot a lot uh yeah next next year okay yeah man you, you've been hitting the ground uh hard man well i mean ever since i met you i mean i know you're working man and i can't we can't do nothing but applaud you for what you do so yeah, yeah. man you can yeah. sit down and relax if you can <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, the show. We're gonna have to find a way to, to get in some of these auditions. Yeah, that's we we literally people, everybody asking about auditions. And you know what's crazy part about it? The easiest way is just to be around because I don't 
we had, we I don't remember the last edition mm -hmm. we didn't did is because we don't have time to do. I may come up with an idea today and mm -hmm. we, sh we shoot it next month. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't really have time to actually do auditions. So it really be when, when we write and stuff, a lot of times I can speak for myself, I'm writing just the parts for people in mind already. From who I from who I know, so the easiest way is just to just just to keep keep doing what y'all doing, be in the mix, and then a, a character pop up. I said, oh, okay, I think he'll kill it, bro. And then we just go from there. It's just right now, is we moving so fast, and you know, obviously yeah. people we work with, uh, if they do good, then we use them again, or uh, you know, and then we made like for instance, we came up with a we uh we got a whole nother movie I didn't even think about uh called um with Brandy. We was on set with Brandy. And came yeah. up with an idea, um, and and we had that uh, written. So it's it's really just being around, you know, what I mean? being mm -hmm. a, a fresh. I, I know for me, I think Jannard does a little bit of casting call process. I don't necessarily yeah. as much, but I'm yeah. I'm shooting movies every every month, yeah. uh, and a lot of his films he he already kind of had written. Yeah, um, so he's still writing yeah. as he goes as well. So we don't really have enough time. To with, do a real casting call, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. With so many uh, projects in the works, right? How do you, um, or what do you do to make sure that nothing loses quality or, or, or mm -hmm. making sure that you're still putting out good content with so many, you know, because, you know, you have so many projects in place. Sometimes mm -hmm. people can let something fall by the wayside. But I've seen you been pretty consistent about putting out quality work. So is there something that you do that when you have so many different things going on that you do to, to maintain um, I mean, I mean, I, I think that we we have we we know that doing these films this fast, we're we're gonna definitely not have, we. It's definitely gonna be uh, not as good as the film that we shot once and had all you mm -hmm. prepared for, right? So I think the knowledge of knowing that we're not gonna get it perfect because we're moving so fast. Is the first thing because you can get in your, you can get in your own way sometimes and try to make something that can't be perfect in, in in that amount of time perfect. You can't make anything perfect, but so I think that the team that we have in place um, is is one of the biggest reasons, right? Because we all yeah. know what we're doing. So even at even if you throw us into a situation where we got like we was in Vegas and was getting yeah. locations while we was in Vegas and shoot. Mm. And that movie is probably gonna be one of the best movies we we shot this year, right? So I think it's because it, the team is strong, and everybody you know is doing their job efficiently, uh, and we, we, you know we get. It's hard for us not to have a quality film when, when we got the team that we got because everybody know how to, everybody on their own right can make a quality film by themselves, right? You see what I'm saying? So I think that's the. That's the biggest part, and the story. I, I don't. I don't think we have a problem with the story. While I think that the, if, if if it would have been a problem, it would be production. But and those people are a one when it comes to it. You know, they can probably make a hundred thousand dollar film with like a million dollar film. So, mm -hmm. so I, I I think it's always going to be quality there. Obviously, you know, the more money you put behind it, and the more time you put in that quality is going to raise, but. I don't think as many people in the country who could do what what the team can do what the team can do in the amount of time. You know what I mean? Did Jeff, Jeff, them, Jeff and Ray, they got like a two million dollar of film equipment. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, we got cranes and all type of shit. So it's it's hard not to make a quality production if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Remember when I was on set with y'all, y'all had a lot of equipment and everything, and I was just I walked in, and I was like, man, this is nice. I ain't touched nothing because I ain't want to yeah. break nothing. Yeah, I don't I'm touch like, it either. I'm like, uh, what that is? I don't touch it either. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to place nothing either. <laughs> so I ain't touching nothing, man. But, uh, man, you know, bro, before we, um, you know, we let you go, of course, we, we want to say thank you again for, you know, allowing us um, to be on the red carpet with you and everything for the bricks. That that was a, you know, we really appreciate it for, you know, inviting us and everything. Um, oh, no. that, that, that that's what it's all about is pe people don't understand how uh, Hollywood got to where Hollywood is. Yeah, and and I study that shit like I I I don't watch anything and and like all of it. I try to yeah. figure it out. And if, if if you look at 
how the uh, Hollywood is is every everybody plays a part. From you know, you 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 have an, a a celebrity who's not even a celebrity yet, right? Mm-hmm. But you have journalists that may be friends. If that person start writing on, let's say the person start writing on you, yeah, or you big, right? You've been in a couple of things, but they write on you. That that's good for them because they can help you blow up, right? And then when you blow up, then you then they getting paid more for their stories because they got a d- direct connection with you, right? So Hollywood, yeah. Hollywood works together and it pulls everybody else in. So if you want to to to, to be successful, you got to pull the most people in because those people are going to look back and be able to, if you connecting the right people in, in place, mm-hmm. then you can't really, you, you're always going to be relevant, right? Because you bring it yeah. in. The, you know what I mean? If you started 10 actor careers, you're always going to be relevant because them 10 actors are going to always Throw your bone if you needed it, right? Right. So yeah. I'm all about building teams, bringing people with me because you never know how long it's gonna go in your favor, right? And if you yeah. just worry about yourself when, when your time is up, then if you're done, it's over, all right? Yeah. yeah. So you got to empower everybody with 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 with, with, with an opportunity. You can't make nobody get it, but you can always try to give all the opportunities you can get, right? So. Yeah. Right. This is definitely sure. people business, you know. You have to be, yeah. you know, because a lot of times it's who you know, you know. Oh, exactly. Most of the time, most yeah. of the time, it's who, you, who you know for sure. Yeah, man. Really appreciate it, man. You gonna you? Have, I know you say you don't really mess with the acting stuff, but you ever thought about just one time doing the Spike Lee thing and doing a cameo? Yeah, appearance? right. Uh, uh, funny, being young. F- funny story. So we got a a, a film. I think I, we shot in 2014. It still looked like it's it's looked like a shot. It was shot yesterday. Uh, Jeff them did a real good job on it. It's a shot on the red. It's called uh, Rise, and you know, you when you're doing like B-roll shots, yeah, you need somebody to walk across. I'm like, man, with nobody else, everybody else was in the movie, and, and people wouldn't dress right. I had jeans on and a black T-shirt, so I chose myself to walk across the street. <laughs> and uh, my home, my homeboys to this day. Dad was like, bro, when you gonna start acting again? You play the shit out that crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I don't do no acting. Oh man, now nah, you wait so you they can't swear. Just they swear that that's if you ask any one of them, they, they swear they swear that role. I play the crackhead. Man, you can't just say that before. I was a regular person walking across the street. Yeah. That's, I'm like, okay. I'm like, man, y'all, you can't just say that and, and say, like, yeah, I play a crackhead. Nah, nah, we need details now. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> nah, I didn't do shit, but walk across the street. They made it up. But <laughs> that's, about, oh. that's, that's, that's about the depth of my acting career. <laughs> that's as so, far as it goes. I feel yeah. it. Anything else you got coming up soon that you want to tell the people about? Or? Man, we got we got a lot. Red flags, too. People been waiting on that. Oh, um, so Amazon Freebie. They yeah. uh, they just picked up Red Flags, which is 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 good because that's like their new streaming platform. Mm, nice. So and, and it's a platform a lot like Tubi, to where they pay off of ads to a weight like ten times more than what Amazon Prime pays. So they normally you know it's harder to get on Freebie. So I just just got a, a email about a week ago saying that uh. It's gonna be up there, I think, in October. So that that's good. You better watch Red Flags on uh, Amazon Freebie, um, and then obviously, or you know, we'll, we'll be finished with Red Flags too uh, this month. And it, it'll be it'll be um, uh, out hopefully by the end of the year. But we shouldn't have a part of that in, in New Orleans. So, oh, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's man. cool. I, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate what y'all are doing, man, because. Uh, uh, when the when the city blows up, when, when you know when film get here like it's supposed to get here, and y'all keep grinding, it's, it's gonna push y'all forward too. You know what I mean? Y'all, y'all, already, doing, y'all already doing what y'all supposed to do. If it, you know what I mean? All it takes for y'all to do is to, to keep doing what y'all doing. Interview somebody, that person take off. They gonna come watch these videos. You know what I mean? They gonna come watch the y'all, y'all record these right? Put them on YouTube. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. So you know what I mean? That, that's what that's what it takes. So y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Uh, keep being students of of, of of the game and um st- stay busy. Yeah, yes sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate get, it. Uh, they, they have ladies and gentlemen, Shannon Washington, man. Appreciate it again, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you.